Welcome, ev greetings everybody. Welcome to the SQLite internal session. Mm, this is uh, this session is intended to give a an uh, overview of how SQLite works and uh, also it began as a fun sharing session to share my knowledge about SQLite, but I guess it might help others as, as well. At the end of the stream, I'll be sharing like a book I've I've been writing an open source book about SQLite internals, uh, so so that so that people can as well uh, contribute. So uh, let's begin. Well, uh, that's uh, those are where the slides are. So if you you just go to to that uh, link. You will see the SQLite uh, um, slides, and all my talks are normally in in there. So that's about it. Well, yeah, I originally presented this at uh, Dev Fest, so and uh, a bit about me. So I'm uh, primarily uh, into Python, and I like open source. So those are to my interests my most uh, um, what I spent time most on so well uh, the reason I chose to present about this it's bec is because uh, I really I just wanted to to see how because I've been working with SQLite for, for a long time and there was the recent the recent folk uh, uh, of SQLite, Libs SQL. So I wanted to deep dive into how SQLite worked to actually uh, start contributing. So uh, that's why I started with uh, SQLite. And uh, we can see that SQLite is the world's most used piece of uh, uh, application software. So in in Richard's uh, in, in Richard Hibbs uh, talk about SQLite. He says that there is the a compression library. Uh, I don't think it's deadly, but a compression library that might be more popular than SQLite. But if we consider if we consider application software like application libraries, so I think SQLite is is hard to beat because it just present everywhere, and uh, SQLite is present like. Uh, on the device that we are using, most probably to to see this talk, it's present like uh, it's used by the military on plane and, and in space. And the reason I choose to to start an introduction to SQLite before diving into the internals is because knowing how SQLite uh, was, uh, knowing the story behind, is great to get, get an idea of how the code base is going to be. What's the motivation behind, and what drives development? And uh, normally, this presentation, uh, as I presented, if you if you've downloaded the presentation, so it's uh, it's meant for later study. And okay, and uh, well, normally, if uh, if someone really is really attending the session, like from from scratch, he, and and they don't know SQLite, so SQLite was started by Dwayne Richard Hip, which is almost always abbreviated to DRH, and uh, so DRH. So Richard Hip, Doctor Richard Hip, has a PhD in computational linguistics. So it's not uh, any PhD about computer science, but it's about uh, the semantics of of computer languages. And uh, one interesting fact, which I mentioned in the book, I will share at the end of this presentation that I'm writing, uh, is that Richard Hibble also worked for Bell Labs. So he has, he has a master's in electrical engineering. And uh, so he actually worked for, for Bell's lab, which is, it seems that great programmers always uh, have a stop at Bell's lab. So uh, SQLite started, uh, as uh, a, a, a on a warship, 
which is the Uskal Stin, so it was meant to be a state of the art ship. And Richard, he was at the time working over there. And so he was working on a problem solving like water flow and pipes when pipes burst. So you have to control the valves, uh, to close the valves so that uh, uh, the, the, the burst is isolated, etc. So it was an NP hot problem. But uh, that what, that's what the ship looks like. And uh, normally the database that was on that ship was Informix. And if you just Google Informix, you will see that it's still around, it's still used. It's by IBM. And uh, well, that's, uh, that was the database that was on ship, but it was always down. Not always, but I mean, uh, people were, kind of blaming uh, Richard, like they want to use the software, but why the software down? The software is down because the database is down. But Richard was like, why Why should he uh, like look to a database when the database can be around? So that's, uh, and uh, he wanted a database that was not server-based. So a database that was file-based, but there were no engines around. And uh, that's a bit the context where he began to write SQLite. It was it was on the spot, so he just wanted to to basically uh, start working on on it uh, because he had some some free time. Uh, so he started, and uh, so he just she just what's interesting in this code is that he started. Uh, the database engine with uh, bytecodes in mind. That's really interesting because normally, traditionally, people would try to pass the query and that, and then do do some steps. But since he he already did his his PhD in computational linguistics, so he knew how to write languages, parsers for languages, compilers for languages. And so this is one part which which makes uh, SQLite really great, and uh, well, it's uh, it's really amazing that from the start, SQLite had some solid groundings. Like for other parts, for the uh, OS interfacing part, for for the algorith uh, algorithms concerning bit trees, etc., concerning indices, concerning the concepts of databases. So he did not do anything. So, but for the f first part, for the front end of the database, so he definitely knew how to how to do. It. And uh, to understand the reliability and stability of the project, it's really important to to understand a bit the milestones, which help shape the project. The project. So, as uh, since uh, SQLite was not used on the warship. So actually, SQLite um, was an open source project. It was on the internet, and so um, that's how it started life as a, as an open source project. The first uh, milestone as uh, was Motorola. So they offered him a contract. That was his first uh, the first time he actually knew that uh, you can monetize open source. It was really a a great moment and which motivated him and uh, to handle contracts so he he took his open source team and they work on the on the contract so and then uh, the fact i'm why i mentioned i'm american online is that since the early times sqlite was understood to be a database which should be used like pretty much everywhere like they wanted to to ship they were shipping cds to customers and they wanted to embed a database in a CD. This shows that pretty much from the start, people had trust in SQLite and people were thinking about using SQLite in many different uh, products. And uh, well, uh, then Nokia came around and among many databases, so they chose SQLite. So it's, uh, it's uh, the way this part of the presentation I I chose to take the time and and do it uh, at this point. It's because uh, 
as a project, like when you when you see the code base and the project itself, it pays to to know like what phases the project the the project went through, and uh, like to become the product it is today. Like it's uh, it's it's very interesting. It's uh, because uh, well, I guess everybody knows uh, like. Uh, it's widely used, etc. But what are the exact milestones which shape the product? So here it is, and uh, and then the next uh, milestone was that Symbian needed to reduce the best factor, as simple as that. So they needed to set up an organization for the good running of the project. So and uh, Richard, like anybody would do, so he he because uh, you are more uh, focused on. On, on the financial aspects. So he gave uh, the initial plan, gave voting rights to the members. And so uh, Richard uh, was doing it like that, the organization, the open source organization. But then uh, a friend from Mozilla reached out and helped to uh, shape the consortium into something nice by, by giving a structure that most open source projects have uh, Shave in such a way that developers get to steer the direction of, of the project. And then Android came and uh, they, they use SQLite a lot. And uh, this is uh, amazing when you consider that uh, this is uh, this was a focal point. Android is, is not so, it's not so like, uh, it's pretty recent uh, as of this talk, we can say compared to other milestones. But even then, this is uh, kind of the final piece, one of the final pieces that cemented SQLite stability. Like when, when uh, like it, it was a deployment at, at scale, so. And then uh, the remaining milestones was when he integrated test coverage. Test coverage now is a, is a, is a thing. I read that uh, document. The main takeaway is uh, I don't think that the modern world has much to, to learn about. But uh, at that time, it was it gave SQLite a great head start, like the code base, the integrated testing. And uh, Postgres relies on peer reviewing to get uh, code into the database to ensure the quality of their code base. They rely on tests, but not as much as SQLite. So one, uh, one by... Uh, one by uh, we can say benefit of uh, testing that people uh, the SQLite team can change code uh, as they see fit. So now we can uh, get a bit into the spirit of the code base. So uh, because a code base, you you have many different choices to 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 make, and you can find different things. But it's good to know that SQLite operates on a on a from scratch principle, like the author has a, a strange uh, itch to code everything as much as he can from scratch. Like it's always that he chooses alternatives and sees, and but at the end of the day, he ends up writing what he needs. So he needed a, a database. So he says, like, let's write it. He wanted a bit tree, uh, like the the layer for the bit tree. So maybe choose a library or something, but he implemented it from scratch, even for the parser, and then he was using Git as everybody, but there were some aspects one is happy, so he built his own control version system, which is for seal. And uh, well, you have, for example, printf, etc. So the main, uh, what drives uh, this is because uh, SQLite, they wanted freedom the freedom to change and to adapt and to modify as they see fit. So that's the main reason why SQLite um, chose a f from first principle uh, uh, culture. So this means, uh, well, this is uh, this is uh, Richard's own words so where, where he explains why he's choosing uh, this uh, approach and why he wrote, for example, his p layer. So if someone they they wrote like their own uh, their own parser their own uh, like tokenizer and the person wrote their own bit really yeah their own virtual machine their own everything their own OS interface layer their own everything completely from scratch so you'd expect 
for something as simple as, as SQLite, the database won't be that simple. The database would definitely not be simple. And uh, of course, you'd be using Fossil. And uh, on, in the database given uh, to Carnegie, Carnegie Mellon, so he mentioned that he doesn't understand why people, they write, they use tools like why ACC, Bison, Legs, or, or, or similar tools, when you can write the same in C and it's faster. So that's a bit his spirit, like if you can get something faster, why use the tools, which is great. Now concerning the internals themselves, because why we cover those two parts, it's because when you dive into the internals, it pays to know like, uh, what you are going to face and how things are going. So it gets you into the, the, it helps you get into the mood of the code base. So SQLite previously, this was in 2015, I think it was 120,000 lines. Now it's not like that. In the book, uh, I will show the end. This has been updated. Now it, it's so 160K lines and 230k lines and uh, so that's uh how sqlite is uh is uh organized to different files etc but there is one one place where they combine all those uh pieces into one uh, single source file if we were to have an overview of the of the good uh, of the good uh, of the process so you'd have the compiler which takes your sql code and I'll put some bytecode, which is, which is consumed by the VM, and then it is executed we, uh, uh, in layers down. But uh, this is a, a better view of what happens when you write your SQL code. So first it goes through the tokenizer. Well, this slide is a bit old, discorrected in the book. Uh, in the book. But uh, first you, you've got the tokenizer, you've got the parser, and then the code generator VM between pager shim OS interface, which will explain what what it's mean, what it means. So uh, since uh, SQLite is a file-based database, so the OS interface does the writing and reading from the file, and uh, from uh, your SQL code to the file. So there are a lot of steps which which are ongoing. And uh, the parser and the code generator, we call it the compiler. Why? Because it compiles the SQL into bytecode. It's done using SQLite 3 prepare statement. And, and uh, th this is why bytecodes and prepared statements are used in uh, synonymously. Sometimes you would see bytecodes and sometimes you would see prepared statements. So those two mean the same thing. And then, uh, the layers below the VM, the bitrate, page regime, and the OS interface. So this is the layer. This is these are the, this is the part which run the the program, uh, the bytecodes, I mean, and it's done using the SQLite three step uh, function, and that's a bit how it goes. That you have the compiler, which is the which which you can say it's, it's the front end, and then from the VM downwards. Uh, it runs the program and the bitry, the pager, the shim, and the OS interface. So the SQLite development team identifies this other into a storage engine and not the layers before it. So this is really meant to, to be reviewed after, but these are a bit the files which are concerned with a parser, which is re -thread and thread safe and generated by, by Lemon. Uh, like instead of using an existing tool to, gener to generate the code needed to pass uh, SQLite, etc. So there he wrote uh, like Lemon, which is of course uh, bitter to consume uh, if you read the source, etc. So that's why it's named Lemon. And the pass output a, a an abstract syntax tree, and uh, an AST is just a tree, just like any tree, which holds. Uh, syntax constructs seems like a some big words but but big words but it, it just like depending on the language that you're implementing an est you just have references to for example 
you can have a function uh, reference to a, to, a, to a function. Some languages they hold the function object uh, or a clause, and and then for example, uh, as children of the function object, you'd have many different steps, etc. So, but just uh, what, that's what uh, NEST is, and then the code generator it checks for the grammar, etc., and transform the EST and determines uh, join order and does query planning. SQLite, it's at this uh, particular moment that it plans the query. The user can throw different uh, steps at it. The user can say like query this, do this, join this. But what exactly happens is determined by the query planner. So the user can write a bit whatever they want. But, uh, I mean, but uh, it's a query planner which will think which will uh, optimize the query and outputs it into bytecode. So the intelligence, like, like a, an intelligent query, like a great query, the speed of the query, the performance of the queries is de depends on the intelligence of the programmer, but also on, on the intelligence of the people who code at the database. Because uh, if they miss uh, plan the query, um, so uh, the programmer might write something brilliant, but uh, it won't be executed. It's I, I think it's clear, but uh, just to mention, and those are the files which are which are actually uh, uh, concerned with the code generator. This is intended like uh, on that you take the slide and go through and go through the code base. That's all. That's why I, I I included the different files, and uh, the code generator it takes the most number of lines in the code base. If you think of it, if the query planning occurs in that step, so definitely like this is the the meat, the meat of the of the of the code base. So it, it is the section with the most number of lines. And then you have the virtual machine, which is the second section with the most lines of code. So just for knowledge, and these are the the, the files which deal with uh, with uh, the virtual machine. And then the interface between the VM and the B3 is defined by B3.edge and then B3. So a SQLite uses a B3 instead of a binary tree. So with a B3, you get logarithmic uh, operation times. And uh, the B plus trees are used for to hold table data. Uh, well, we will come to that later on. But the, the B minus trees, uh, is used to hold the uh, indices so and you can have multiple bit trees uh, per file it is read uh, via cursor and uh, you can have concurrent read writes on the same table but with different cursors so the same cursor won't be going everywhere so if you want to carry on another operation you'd have to have another cursor so you have the page uh, cache uh, the pager so among others it protects data from like power loss and you have the rollback mode and, and the write ahead log mode so the pager is uh, is concerned uh, also about concurrency control and has in memory cache and these are some files which are concerned with a with a pager so this is useful if you want to go and then the the final layer uh, the final logic layer, we can say, is the shim layer, which is concerned with the encryption, compression, logging, etc. So, this is uh, the layer where the final, the, the end of the logical steps, and the shim layer is used to emulate an or OS layer. It's used to simulate hardware failures. So, which is which is great, a great idea for for testing. And uh, those are the files which are concerned. No matter this step, you also have the virtual file system in place, which is, uh, which is uh, well, you might see the VFS. So the VFS is at this step. And then you have the OS specific uh, interface. Uh, it is changed at runtime, depending on the operating system. And uh, those are some files which are concerned with the OS layer. Now, uh, about some interesting part of uh, SQLite concerning recovery. Like 
if you if you are reading a SQLite book, I bet this is the most uh, interesting part. So as we see, we have the roll button and the right ahead log, which are concerned uh, about uh, recovery. If your data gets corrupted or something like that, how to recover and uh, and how to ensure consistent operations. So this is the section you'd want to pay the most attention to. So when you when you're reading a database, so if you're in the rollback mode, which is by default, so you'd acquire, acquire your shared lock. And then uh, when you have a shared lock, normally in SQLite, in the default mode, either you are writing or you are having different uh, reads being done at the same time. So a shared lock ensures that data is not being changed. And then when you want to write, so the first the process first acquires a reserved log and then the 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 data the whatever data there is is uh, copied to the journal cache so normally uh, you have uh, the rollback normally you have if it's uh, in in the rollback mode you'd have uh, files called uh, 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 journal files, uh, file dot database journal dot database, uh, uh, and then journal file. You can search in your PC. You will see, but there are lots of these files, and uh, these files like they have the file on G on disk. This you, you also have a part of the file like the 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 part of the program which manages the journal. It stores some data also in the in the cache and then you have uh, well and uh, this is uh, the extension of a journal in rollback mode mode and then when the user actually changes like it was uh, in the user space from a to to b so it flushes whatever there is in the os cache to to disk and then uh, this takes time flushing uh, from the OS cache to this, this takes time. This can be turned off, but of course you won't get your data if power is lost. And then uh, it acquires uh, an exclusive lock, which uh, the exclusive lock means like uh, it stops uh, like writing uh, like elsewhere like only this process will be writing, etc. So it flushes from the OS cache, cache to disk. And normally, when you commit, what happens is that it just destroys the journal. Committing doesn't like flush to disk. It doesn't uh, modify the cache. Doesn't do anything. But committing actually just flushes, the, uh, just uh, erases the journal. So if ever there was a power loss before, before it commit. So what uh, SQLite will do, it will, when power is restored, it will acquire your shared log, then an exclusive log, and it will copy the data from disk to the OS cache, and then uh, to to the database file, not the general file, but the database file, it will copy the data into the cache over there, and then it will flush from the disk, uh, from the file uh, cache uh, to the file disk. So in the book, you will get a clearer picture. Those are just some some slides. And in the right ahead uh, log mode, so when uh, when you let's say you have uh, you're modifying some stuff, so it will copy it into the OS cache, and and then you have another process wanted to read the database, uh, like what it will do. SQLite will present to the user like a snapshot of the database, like. A process is writing, another process is reading, but SQLite will present a, a snapshot midway of what is happening to that other user. So one will see something, the other will see another thing, but at least uh, one is not waiting because when it is waiting, let's say when we're using the rollback mode, if one process is waiting, so what will happen is, uh, 
like uh, you will get the status that SQLite is busy. So, and uh, that's uh, the main takeaway from the WAL mode is that you can have different reads and writes ongoing at the same time. And uh, normally you have a checkpoint which uh, flushes uh, like um, whatever there is in the in the journal to to this. And uh, somewhat about the VM. So the the VM used to be stack based. Just like uh, for example, if you go into C Python, C Python also has a VM, and the C Python VM. So it is stack based, but SQLite it it uh, it just pulses the bytecodes into a switch statement inside a for loop. So this is how it executes whatever there is to be executed. And this one uh, with SQLite also it is the same. This one is using libsql. Uh, but if you explain, for example, if you use Postgres to explain, you will have a different. You will have another output. It will it will uh, explains what it what it executed at first, etc. But in SQLite, you will actually get bytecodes. So SQLite is really bytecodes oriented. And uh, well, that's it. And uh, from that uh, point uh, onwards, I will uh, present uh, from, uh, let me, let me, let me just uh, share my screen to like uh, a, a tab. Uh, Okay. Okay. I know that. Let me add. Uh... Okay. So this is uh, now concerning uh, this one we've covered, but concerning uh, about the file and record format. So now a SQLite database is actually a series of, of bytes. So the dot db it's a, it's a, a series of bytes and then normally the database is divided into into sections which which is called pages so they are equally sized and then uh, for, for, uh, a sql lat file always starts with these uh, letters it has uh, a null term terminator also. And then uh, normally this is what uh, there is in a SQLite file. So from bytes uh, 0 to 16, you will have those letters. And then for the next two bytes, you will have the database size, etc. So you have file format, etc. So, but the first 100 bytes, the first 100 bytes of a database file has the db header which contains uh, information about what happens uh, what there is in the database and then that free space in that first page so this free page free page can be can be used this free space or can be used to to represent any page which the database engine sees uh, fit to use but it should just be noted that if ever there is a page which is using the first page so it will have 100 bytes less uh, space so in any page will be one of these types either a log by page or a free list page or a p3 page or a payload over overflow page or a pointer map page so any type of page so the data the file is divided into different pages, different chunks called pages, but pages will fall in one of these categories. So normally a, a log by page is is for legacy reason. It's around, so you don't have to worry about it. You also have the free list page, which uh, a free list page so has many trunk pages, and each trunk page has an array with the numbers of a free list, free list leaf pages. So, free list pages are pages which are unused. Like, uh, so that's why. Uh, so uh, you have uh, normally you will hear that SQLite has auto vacuum. So it means that uh, or defragmentation. It is that when uh, 
when when Uto Vekam is enabled, so unused pages are not uh, allocated to freelist pages, but a new file, for example, if there is a gap which is unused, so if Uto Vekam is enabled, so you won't have those gaps in pages, those unused uh, pages or stuff like that. SQLite will just uh, carry on to just close the gap. And it's much like uh, in operating system like or defragmenting with steps so this is what happens if you are using the vacuum command so all those gaps in in the in the bytes so it will fill them but if you are using auto vacuum so it will automatically do that so a bit page. this is the most important page type of page in the database so a bit page can either be a table or an index, index page, and both can be either a leaf or interior page. So this shows a more complete picture of uh, the B tree, of, of B tree pages. So you have the root page, which has key, and the data is another key. The root page contains uh, the key and the data, of, of uh, which is another key in the interior pages, and the data of an interior page is actually the key of a leaf page and the data here holds the records records data so if if ever if ever the data the records data overflows it's too much to 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 be held in this space so it will be held in that space and then it will have a re reference to another page which uh, where the raw data is, is continued for example using blob or something like that so that's where overflow pages they they come into into format and then uh, the record format let's say you have a row so how is it encoded so you have the key and the data the data which has header header size type and data for example you have this row which has id price and name it would be encoded at, as this so this would be the header and this would be this would be the the data port. And for example, uh, we have 411. So for the header size. So what does one means? So we have a lookup table here. So one is a is an 8-bit to complement integer. So that's what it means. And then we have 21. Um, what does 21 here means for this record? It uh, it is, uh, so we see in the table, we see that uh, if it is greater than 13, 21 is greater than 13. And if it is uh, like odd, 21 is, is odd, it's not even, so it will be this. So value is a string in the test uh, and uh, bytes in length. So the we just replace the, the length of the string in uh, in that formula and we get 21 so that's what 21 means and then the value will be as is so the type or encoded using values in in that table so a b tree this is what a b tree page format uh, looks like you will have the header you will have this uh, byte area and all these like spaces they're not really like interesting but uh, just uh, just to know to know around and uh, to 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 conclude like what I was saying concerning the rollback and the WL mode. Uh, so those are some reasons why the rollback mode is still the default mode. And uh, well, those are a bit about uh, how the database file is. And how actual how um, um, the how rows are, are encoded. So this was uh, the book is is more like dated than than my slides, which I which I copied from fly dot dot io. And uh, so now uh, let's uh, let's come to 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 what. Uh, that was the end of the presentation. So, okay, so 
Okay, apparently I can uh, only uh, have this much page on StreamYard. So let me just uh, uh, open the slides in Speaker Deck and Okay, so just give me some 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 minutes. So so me I'm doing just some stream yard like. Okay. So this is uh, okay. This is uh, okay. so by knowing the internals are is useful. Like there is a lot to to SQLite uh, internals, but um, why is why are the knowing the internals useful? So there is this talk about using virtual tables to actually uh, corrupt the database, which is uh, great if you know the, uh, like it's called the curse of C. So wherever there is C, you know that there are something that that's bound to happen that, that, is, that is bad. And uh, so from the web SQL was a standard proposed about having a SQLite database in the browser. And then uh, it was a bad idea because uh, it used, it used, it proposed to use the 3.6.19, the version of SQLite, but obviously if there are secu security fixes, the version will move. So it's not uh, very convenient to, to have such a definition, but uh, nevertheless, it enabled to leverage um, like flows from JavaScript, and it was replaced by IndexedDB. But uh, normally, this would be covered in the book. Like how uh, we would be covering virtual tables and actually how to leverage uh, these for some more awesome works. So, and then uh, we'll end uh, by talking a bit about LibSQL, which is uh, responsible for this for the talk today. Uh, it's a great talk about uh, SQLite because you have source open and you have open source uh, softwares. Source open softwares are softwares which where, where the source is open, the source is available, but unfortunately, uh, it's uh, they don't accept contributions that much. Like the culture is not open. So the source is open, but the culture, contributing culture is not open. So SQLite is a bit in that mode where it's not like you are just sending a pull request. You you have to, to get into the project to actually propose steps to, you can't just make some random improvements, et cetera. So, but LibSQL is, is great, is how SQLite was supposed to be. And then you also have Lumos SQL, which is, Another great uh, fork. Uh, it's it's not a fork. Sorry, Luma SQL ensures that you always have the latest version of SQLite running, but it 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 has some additions, particularly in terms of cryptography. It has swappable, as you saw, DB Engine and Bitrace, etc. And you'll, we concerning if we talk of SQLite, we also have lot uh, lots of distributed clones like Dale Seal, etc. And uh, so LibSQL, for example, uh, introduced WSM support to SQLite. And now you don't have like to, to, to do your own crazy stuff to get SQLite on the browser, like relying on someone uh, doing, adding some libraries and stuff. So you get it natively. And those are some quotes about SQLite uh, from the author and uh, so this is uh, like why you take bold steps, bold step pace. And if you want to do it, like 
just do it. It, it was open source anyways. And uh, he also said that if he knew how hard it, it was, so maybe he would, have, he would not have written it. So that's, uh, I guess, a bit how startups are. Because uh, if you are, if you are to think about everything and, and and plan everything and do everything before times, so you would end up like maybe not doing it. But the best way is to to go along and and start. So let's see, like I don't know if we have some some uh, some questions or let me see the the stream if we have some some question or something like that. Okay, so we don't have any question on the on the stream also, but uh, okay, maybe some uh, Gavin, maybe you have some some questions. Some I don't. Oh yes, uh, the the book. Uh, I don't know from from where exactly you you came from, but I'll try to to put the book in the in the chat, in the in the chat, uh, so that you can view it. But Gavin, maybe you have some. Oh, let me see. Okay, the second one value, I guess it's in the record format. So normally you have uh, the ID, you have the price, both are integers. And if you if you go into the, the lookup table for the record format, it says that if ever you have like integers and stuff, so it's the value is one. So the, the the value is uh, one. So let it, let me just uh, no, not that not that one. But let me let me just uh, go to the uh, to the book. Okay. So. Okay, so you have zero, so you have three. So these two, normally they fit into one bit, into eight bits, sorry. A zero and a three, they all fit into one bit. So the corresponding value will be, would be one. So that's why you have one here. Like you, you have the type, the, the first, uh, the first uh, defines uh, the first value in the record format defines the header size, and uh, next it defines the like normally if you, you if you are passing that header, so you'd read that the header size is is four, and then you know that you expect three more values for data types. So the first type, the the first uh, data would be of type one of type one and then the third would be of type 21 which is which is text normally uh, yes uh, in the text uh, encoding so this says it is a text and this says it is it is a it is a an integer here and then uh, then you have the the value so it's it's pretty pretty simple so find pages from the few free list. So the free list is not really used, but uh, it's just that you have a root node in the free list, which has numbers to the next free list. And so it can find pages because it is a, it's just tra traversing a link list uh, at that point. I don't know if it, if it answers your, your question. So, let me just uh, add that book in the chat there. Okay. Um, okay, so. Here is the book link. Okay, and uh, I think we can uh, we can close the broadcast now. So do you have like some? I don't know what's your background in 
in uh, in databases exactly but uh, i guess uh, i hope uh, that everybody who attended like they got something out, out of it out of it so thank you everybody for coming and see you like uh, another broadcast essentially <laughs>